on with the movie news. Uh, shall we? Yes, we shall. Uh, the troubled production of World War Z is uh, getting a little more help with the script. Uh, it was reported that Damien Lindenlof was uh, rewriting the World War Two, uh, World World War Two, World of the War Z script, but now uh, the uh, now Deadline claims that Kevin in the Woods director Drew Goodard uh, has come aboard to revise the script's ending. Uh, the site ad, the site adds that Lindenlof cracked a potential new ending for the, of the film, but Lindenlof uh, didn't have time to do. Uh, the scripting, so that task will fall to Goodard, who most uh, recently adapted uh, Rubble Apocalypse, which is a Steven, uh, which is Steven Spielberg's next film at DreamWorks. Uh, however, in case Goodard is unavailable to do work on the ending, the job may fall into Oscar-winning Christopher uh, McQuarrie, who uh, uh, did the uh, the Usual Suspects. Uh, World War Z. We've talked about World War Z here on the show um, a number of times. Um, of course, you know that the whole trouble thing. I went off. I went off like a ten minute rant or fifteen minute rant about uh, World War Z. So uh, um, it's interesting. I mean, the fact that you know this movie is is, is still afloat is uh, very surprising. But uh, you know, now Damien Lindelof came in. You know, he's he's written. Per- whoa, uh, he's written. Um, um, I told us uh, he's written Prometheus. He's written some of the Lost. Uh, he's pretty much uh, written a lot of Lost episodes. He wrote pretty much the whole season after uh, J.J. Abrams left. Uh, he's and he's done a bunch of. He's doing Star Trek. He did Star Trek one. I don't know. Is he doing Star Trek two? I don't think he's doing. Uh, I forgot. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's done a lot of stuff. And now you know Drew Goodard, who wrote Kevin, wrote Kevin in the Woods and uh, co-wrote Kevin in the Woods and directed it. Kevin in the Woods, by the way, again, I give it a five out of five because that movie is is awesome. It's coming on DVD. I think in August, um, so you should really check it out when, when it comes out. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, World War Z is still in the news uh, because they still need to find uh, an ending for the movie. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, next news item. Uh, despite constant rumors and speculation uh, of the villain in Star Trek II, uh, that continues to be a mystery. <laughs> Sorry, Benedict Cumberbatch is playing the villain, and we hopefully will find out who he's playing before the film opens on its uh, on its, uh, on its date, May 17th of 2013. J.J. Uh, Abrams is known for his secrecy with projects, uh, obviously Cloverfield and Super 8 and um, uh, some of the Lost episodes, I guess, that he did. Um, but uh, where was I? I told us place now. I continues uh, with Star Trek Two. However, Carl Urban may have accidentally let the cat out of the bag during a promotion junket for his upcoming film Dread. Uh, Carl Urban told uh, SFX uh, about what it's like to work with Cumberbatch. He said, and he said he's awesome. He's a great addition. I think his Gary Mitchell is going to be ex- is going to be great. Now, who is Gary Mitchell? Uh, if you don't consider The Cage to be the first episode of Star Trek, the original series, then Gary Mitchell is the series' first antagonist, a.k.a. first villain. Um, not really a spoiler, what I'm about to say, because uh, the, origin, you know, the original series, was it back in the 70s, 80s, no, 60s, maybe? No, not 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, the character appeared in the series' premiere episode, where no man has gone before, and is played by Gary uh, Lockwood. Uh, Mitchell attended Starfleet Academy with Kirk, and the two went on a mission to planet where Mitchell was hit by a galactic barrier that gave him the abilities, uh, gave him some abilities like telep- uh, like telep- uh, tele- telepathic, uh, telekinesis, uh, the ability to control energy, including both its uh, its directed use as a weapon against other organisms and an inevitable, and uh, he became uh, uh, invulnerable to uh, phaser weapons. Uh, the ability to manipulate matter, including the instant uh, materialization and dematerialization of both organisms and objects. Uh, Mitchell became too violent and dangerous, and Captain Kirk attempted to uh, strand Mitchell on Delta Vega. <laughs> a little nerdy there. Uh, the two fought, and Kirk killed Mitchell by knocking him into a grave uh, that Mitchell had uh, ironically prepared for this captain. Uh, Kirk used a phaser gun to make a bunch of rocks fall on top of Mitchell, which, when you think about it, when you read his powers, it's kind of useless. Anyway. Uh, that's how we ended. Uh, returning back to Abrams, uh, Star Trek Two. Uh, the villain for a while was rumored to be a uh, Khan, which, uh, you know, I play little uh, tidbits of you know uh, that that clip here and there uh, when I want to make a point or something. Uh, where is it? I know I you you know I was gonna play it. I should have really prepared this. Where that is? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Uh, 
Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> there's a little random tidbit there. Uh, anyway, that's, um, what was I saying? Where was I? Uh, where was I? All right. Um, Okay, Kama's been the villains for a long time. Uh, Simon Pegg actually came out. He plays, uh, uh, was, I was about to call him Benji, but that's not his character. That's the character of Mission Impossible with Ghost Protocol. Um, uh, Scotty, there you go. Um, he denied uh, the report that uh, that Kama would be the villain in the upcoming sequels. Um, SFX points out that Mitchell had already appeared in the new Star Trek comic book series, because uh, I guess they don't want, you know, the com there's a comic book series written about Star Trek, and... I think if I think it, I guess it follows um, um, uh, the 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 Abrams uh, storyline. Uh, anyway, uh, furthermore, the film's co-writer Robert Orchi has denied that Mitchell will be in the vil will be the villain, but uh, but uh, Orchi could uh, of course be lying, considering that you know they want to keep the the the, 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 the villain the secret. Uh, finally, uh, Urban's uh, reveal uh, seems credible since Cumberbatch. Uh, there is a, a set photo of Cumberbatch and um, and uh, what's his name? Uh, I was about to call him Zachary Levi. That's not who he is. Um, oh my God! I forgot his name. <sighs> Zachary Quinto. There you go. Hey, it takes me a while. Uh, Zachary Quinto, who plays Spock. Uh, the two of them. There's a set photo of the two of them fighting, and uh, Cumberbatch. Um, the outfit he's wearing has actually, actually has a Starfleet emblem on it, so that could be uh, who he's actually playing. Um, there's also still the matter of the Klingons, which uh, they'll, we'll see how they factor into the plot, considering that the Klingons were in the first one, but they were cut out uh, in the end, so who knows about that. Uh, Gary Mitchell from the original series, uh, oh wait, that's, that's actually not important. Alright, um, yeah, so there you go. Gary Mitchell might be the villain in Star Trek 2. Uh, we'll wait to see what happens with that. Uh, and there we go, another interruption. Uh, uh, Alright, so here we go. Uh, next two news items, and then I'll let that song that interrupted me play. Uh, this involvement, his involvement has been ruined for months, and now it's official. Chronicle director Josh Trank will be directing Fanta the Fantastic Four reboot for 20th Century Fox. Uh, Deadline landed, landed the news and revealed that the film would be the next Marvel property to be slated for production and dated for the release of 20th Century Fox. Uh, however, there's no word on when that date might be, uh, although in spite of the fact that Trank is also attached, is also attached to a spin-off movie uh, for Venom and the adaptation uh, for the graphic novel Red Star, uh, Fox expects Fantastic Four to be the next film that Josh Trank's directed. Josh Trank, I think, did an, an amazing job directing Chronicle, and I think, uh, I think uh, he'll do an amazing job uh, doing Fantastic Four. Um, and, you know, if it goes on to make Venom... Uh, and the Red Star, I, I know nothing about the Red Star, but Venom uh, and uh, Fantastic Four, I think, will be interesting projects for uh, for Josh Trank to, to take it, to, you know, to take on. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's move on. It looks like the planned Daredevil reboot is in trouble with director David Slade, who directed uh, Thirty Days of Night and uh, Hard Candy, and I think he also directed one of the Twilight movies, uh, has departed the Long Gesture project, uh, according to Deadline. Deadline's in news today. Uh, the Dirty Days of Night director commitments to the forthcoming Hannibal TV series, because uh, they're making a Hannibal TV series, uh, means that he can no longer oversee the project, and the 20th Century Fox needs to find a director to replace him and make the movie by the fall, or risk having the rights revert back to Marvel Studios and Disney. Because, of course, um, we talked about this many times in the show, uh, Marvel does not own all its characters, because uh, you know, obviously, you know, Spider-Man is at, over at Sony, uh, pictures and um, uh, uh, the X Men and Daredevil over at Fox. Um, who else don't they own? Uh, forgot. Who, well, those are the main ones, I guess you could talk about. Uh, so yeah, there you go. And uh, it's a shame, though. I mean, I, I like David Slade. I, I, you know, you ask anybody. I think Thirty Days of Night is is a really good uh, vampire movie. I think it, at the time, you know, the vampires were starting to get a little sparkly. Uh, 30 Days of Night was out there, so, uh, I think it was even before Twilight, uh, but, you know, 30 Days of Night kind of bought back the, the true, you know, badass vampires that we all know, um, and I like David Slade, I, you know, I loved Hard Candy, I think Hard Candy is, is one of those movies that I don't think a lot of people have seen, and I think they should see, because Hard Candy is, is really a good movie, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I, it's a, sh it's a shame to see David Slade go, I thought, you know, him directing Daredevil would be kind of interesting to see, 
Um, and I'll be interested to see who uh, 20th Century Fox picks up to direct Daredevil. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame, but it happens. So, uh, All right, guys.